Hello, welcome to this Click Team Fusion 2.5 video tutorial on string manipulation. So what is string manipulation? Well, it's basically taking a string and doing stuff with that string to make magic happen. You can do a lot of stuff like this in Fusion 2.5. Once you get to grips with using things like the string parser and string tokenizer, uh, you can literally uh, store an unlimited, almost unlimited amount of data in one string, i.e. one sentence or one, uh, just one piece of data and then break that down. So I, th I felt like it was important to make this video today because it's going to show you guys how you can um, take uh, just one string of data and break it down and do whatever you want with it. This is a good example for if you're making some kind of word game, uh, you could literally have all your data in one string and break it down and use it however you want uh, in the app. So here we go. Let's rock and roll. Let's do this. So we've got a blank app here, as you can see. Uh, so the first thing that we are going to do is insert a list object. Uh, so let's drop drop that in. I'll just drop it at the bottom there. I'll just make it this big. All right, so run the application. I like to run the application just so you can see what's going on. So we've got a list at the bottom here and nothing else uh, going on inside Fusion. Just going to make that a little bit bigger. All right, so what do we want to do? Let's drop in a string object. All right, so you could do something like uh, let's let's just pretend that we are going to build some kind of. Uh, quiz or test game so the user has to fill in the blanks all right so i'm going to i'm going to show you how you can do this in such minimal events and how you can do it uh, by uh, combining all your data into one string uh, so hopefully this will be helpful for quite a few people out there so this is going to be so it's going to look something like this so uh, i underscore uh, to the park so if you was doing something like, uh, you know, you've got to fill in the, the blank, it would be like, I went to the park. Um, so you need to try and figure out how we can get this into a format on the screen that the user can do. So the, we need to insert an edit box because that's going to be where the user types in the possible answer. So I can censor that text. Um, I can... I can also make sure that these are all the same size so everything's nicely formatted. There we go. I can clone that string down. Let's do it by 40 pixels. Bring it up. All right. And let's just center that. So everything is centered. Everything's centered. Everything's working fine. So let's label these. Nice to keep everything nice and neat. So this will be Q1 and Q2. Um, and then the edit box, uh, answer box. All right, there we go. So now when I run the application, you can see we have I underscore to the park in this list. We have a text string here, a text string here, and then an edit box here where we can type stuff in. Just going to modify some of this edit box. I'm going to get rid of the 3D look, so I'm not a fan of the 3D look. That much, much better. Um, in fact, we could even get rid of the border if you wanted, make it look like it's part, part of it. That's pretty cool. Um, fact what I could do is insert a quick backdrop like this and make it black um, and we can position it up here like so so it's the same width as the edit box just like that and then just quickly jump to here and just change the height to two pixels so now we're going to make it look as if we have drawn a bottom border when in fact we actually haven't so when we run the app now you can see look at that I think I need to put a bit more space in between these objects and I also need to bring this quick backdrop object up slightly there we go yes looks good all right where do we go from here so how do we take this data out of here and put it up here this is where the magic begins first thing you need to do is drop in the string tokenizer now you can use the string parser as well uh, but for the sake of this video i'm going to use the string tokenizer because i'm going to do this step by step so you can visually see how we break the string down uh, and parse it up into here so the first thing that we need to do is create a global string that says uh, correct 
underscore answer because we're going to extract that out um, and that is pretty much it so let's do the data format how are we going to present the data so we can break it down in the event editor so this is going to be our list of stuff so what we will typically do is i underscore to the park now you need to break your data up into elements and we do that with the with a delimiter uh, such as a hash so we can do hash i underscore when uh, i underscore to the park hash now we need to reveal what the answer should be so we're going to type in went um and and that's pretty much it for now we can we can add on to that later on so we've got two elements to this um to this string now we've got the question element and then we've got the answer and it's separated by a hash that indicates to us when the element finishes and when the next element starts so we can simply extract that out uh so let's go ahead and do that right now so we can let's we can just do start of frame that's fine so start of frame let's let's track the question number so global value let's do question number let's track the question number that we're up to that's going to be pretty cool all right so what we do is we split the string first of all <clears throat> and we on the line we get line and it's going to ask us what the line number is well we can simply get the question number so obviously the first one would be zero then it's going to ask us for delimiters and we're going to use hash so i just need to make sure that this is a zero based index list so the first one is zero um so what's happened here now is at the start of the frame it takes the first line as you can see there and it splits it up and it uses the hash as a delimiter so this text once it's been split once it's been sent to the string tokenizer um the first element will be i underscore to the park and then the second element will be went and then if you put another hash here and anything else after then that'll be the third element so hopefully you get it right now uh, the hash is just literally telling the string tokenizer uh, where to break the elements up so to do a bit of manipulation you could do this a lot quicker but i'm going to show you a, a little bit of a longer way to do this just so you can grasp it visually what's going on uh, so we can do part one and a part two and then we can also do a temp part these are global strings all right so you, it's all going to come together real shortly i'm going to show you how we're going to break this down all right so the first thing that we do is split uh the string uh from the question um in the list so what we can now do is we can now set the global string um part one to get element zero which will be we open this list up uh, this will be element zero it's the first element i underscore to the park so this is element one so we can then do set global string correct answer to get element one so if i run that now and we just check out those global strings you'll see we've split it down so you can see we've got the correct answer now which is went we've got that there from element number one uh, and we've got part one i underscore to the park uh, so what we need to do now is break this down into two parts because we need to get rid of the underscore for starters and then it's going to be i to the park so i and then to the park down here so how do we split that string up well now that we've got it stored we can now split that up again so we create another event that says only one action when event loops um, and then we simply split the string part one but this time we're going to use the underscore as the delimiter and then we can reset part one to get element zero and then we can set part two as get element one so when i run the application now you should see that we have the correct answer is went uh, the first part which is i and then the second part which is to the park uh, so what we can now do is we can now apply these so only one action when event loops again we can apply these now to our strings so we can simply change the alterable string of the first one uh, to part one and this one to part two so when i run the application now you can now see how we've managed to manipulate this data uh, up here so i uh, to the park now i uh, just want to clear something up that we do have um, a space here if you can see there's an invisible space at the end so let's clean that up and get rid of it so we just look for the event uh, where we set part one 
So we set part one to element zero. So what we can do <coughs> is um, we can, um, let's just do it so you can see it visually. So we set global string to part one. We set it to um, left part one. And then we get the length of part one. And then we do minus one. So now when you run the application, you should see that the missing space has now gone. So it's just I. Okay, so if you're just wondering how I did that, I'll just show you visually. So we split the string uh, and then we set the elements. And then what we do is we get part one again. And this time we set it to the left and we use the text part one. We get the length of part one and then we just minus one off the length and that keeps it clean. So we can now literally do the same thing for part two. So we can set part two to, uh, but this time we're gonna do it from the right. So we do right, part two, um, and then we do uh, length of part two minus one, but that's not gonna work. Let me show you why. <laughs> I need to show you why. So you, there you go. Yeah, it's going to work straight away. So, okay. All right. So you can see how we've broken all this data down in literally three events. And we didn't need to do three events. We could have probably all done all this in one event, but I'm just showing you just so you just breaking it down a little bit easier for you. So we've now taken this and we can now type in went. Voila. And all we have to do is call in the events to detect when the user has typed in the correct um, answer. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to change this from start to frame and I'm going to put this to only one action when event loops. The reason why I'm going to do this is I'm going to pop all this into a uh, group. So do question. Uh, I'm just going to edit that and deactivate it at start so it's no longer active. I'm going to get all them and pop it in there. So basically what happens is we trigger this do uh, question event group. And what happens is when this event group launches, uh, Fusion will run through these events in order. So it'll execute this event first. So it'll do all this that we've done here. And then it'll execute this event and do everything that we've done here, all these actions. And then it'll do the same for this one as well. Um, so you can look at that by looking through the event list editor, just like that. You can see from top to bottom, this is how it's gonna work. So Fusion's gonna open this group up. It's gonna perform all these actions one by one, top to bottom. And as soon as it gets to the bottom, it's gonna finish. Uh, so what does this enable us to do? Well, let's chuck in a score object. Yep. Um, and don't forget, we are keeping track of the question number we're up to because it's here, question number. So all we have to do now, once this group's active, uh, once these events are finished, all we have to do is just check, compare to general values, get the text of the answer box, and is it equal to the global string correct answer? Because we've already split that out, haven't we? Remember when we did all that, uh, we've already split it out. Well, we, we haven't activated the group yet, so we'll do that right now. Let's drop a button in that says next question. I'm going to make this MFA available so you can download it. Take a look at it, see how it all works. Uh, so next question, here we go. All right, so what we do is user clicks on next question, add a new condition. Let's check that the do question group is not open. So we can right click and negate that. So what this event is saying here is when we click on the button and this group is not activated, we are going to go to group of events, activate and do question. All right. So when I do this now and click on next question, you can see it's taken all that data because it's activated this group now. It's taken all the data from that first string and broken it all down. So now all we're doing is we're just going to detect for when the user types in went. So when this edit box is equal to this, then we do something. So edit uh, the edit box equals correct answer. Uh, what we can do is score. So we do player score. Let's add some points. So we'll do score, add to score 15. Um, what else do we need to do? We also need to just check something. Just, I went to the park. So we can add 15 points to the player score and that'll reflect. Um, we have to put a cooldown in. The reason why I want to put a cooldown in is because if I deactivate this group 
Um, if I deactivate this group, well, let's just give it a shot first. We might not need to put the cooldown in. So we add 15 to the score, um, and then we simply add one to the question number so that the next time it comes around it knows which question to ask so we deactivate group do question all right so let's give that a shot right now so i need to put in a second uh a second one so uh, we went oh, think of something uh, we are Um, we live on something Earth. And then obviously the answer is planet. All right, let's try that. So I'll run that. We'll get the first question, I. So I'm going to, when I type in here now, went, you'll see that we've got 15 points added on. When we go to the next question, obviously we need to clear that answer box when we go to the next question as well. So let's just uh, do that right now. Um, when we click on the button, edit, we can set text. There we go. So that sets the text to blank. So let's do it again. So I went to the park, 15 points. Next question, we live on planet Earth. Another 15 points. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you manipulate strings in Fusion 2.5. You can see we've pretty much got the premise of a game up and running already, a quiz game. Um, you know, some kind of fill-in-the-blank game. Uh, and literally, we have achieved this in five events. Not even five events, really. Yeah, five events. Let's go for five events. But you can see how quick we've done that in Fusion. And that is pure string manipulation just by breaking down all this. So, I mean, if you wanted to create hundreds and hundreds of lines of questions, you just literally fill all this in, in the same format as up here. Um, and you're cooking on gas. So you just F8, you just do next question. It gives you the question. Uh, if you type in the wrong word, it's not going to do anything until you type in the correct one. So you type in went and it's giving you 15 points. And then you can just do next question. We live on planet Earth and the jobs are good. And thanks for tuning into this video. Don't forget to check out the Click Fusion Academy for more, lots more video tutorials like this. Over 18 hours worth of videos, lots of written tutorials and downloads as well for you to check out. Uh, Learn Fusion 2.5 is a very, very powerful piece of software. I've been using it for over 10 years proactively, professionally, um, and there is so much stuff you can do. Uh, with Fusion 2.5, it's an unbelievable piece of software uh, and, and, and it just gives me great pleasure in being able to show people what you can actually do with it and what you can achieve, um, you know, with such minimal events. Things do not have to be complicated. Once you know how to use this string tokenizer uh, and once you know how to manipulate strings in your own way, uh, you're literally set to do and achieve anything. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next video.